41,000 years ago, auroras blazed near the equator, and Neanderthals went extinct. Let's dive into it. A geomagnetic disruption caused auroras to wander for centuries back then. Now, typically, if you want to be dazzled by spectacular northern lights, your best bet is to skywatch near the North Pole. But that wasn't the case 41,000 years ago, when a disruption to Earth's magnetic field sent auroras wandering towards the equator. During this geomagnetic disturbance, known as the Le Champ event or the Le Champ excursion, the planet's magnetic north and south weakened substantially. And the magnetic field began to tilt on its axis and even diminished to a fraction of its former strength. Now tilted on its axis and wandering around, in fact, in multiple places near the equator, this lessened the magnetic pull that normally directs the flow of high-energy solar particles towards the North and South Poles, what we call the Aurora Belt. And this is where they interact with atmospheric gases to illuminate the night skies as the Northern and Southern Lights. But back 41,000 years ago, during the Le Champ excursion, it was quite different. Now, it took about 1,300 years for the magnetic field to return to its original strength and tilt. And during that time, the auroras strayed to near equatorial latitudes, where they are typically never seen. And this is all information coming out from a paper that came out December of 2020. 2021, I apologize. Now, this period of intense geomagnetic change may have also shaped changes in Earth's atmosphere that affected living conditions on parts of the planet because this is a time where mass extinctions occurred and Neanderthal went extinct. And we'll get to those graphics in just a moment. But first, we're going to look at an animation of what the magnetic field changes look like during that time. And I'm going to need to move this so that we can see the date at the top right here. We're going to go from about 43 to 39. And remember, the Le Champ was at 41,000. So here is what the magnetic field did on Earth at that time. And this is, you see it moving down towards the equator during the excursion, similar to the South Atlantic anomaly. It wasn't, let's say, instantaneous, but it was quick. It wasn't geologically instantaneous in a sense that if you were alive on Earth, you wouldn't notice it. It would be happening year after year after year. You would see a slow cumulative effect. And that's it. That was it. So it was that quick mo moment when the dipole moved down here to the equator at around 42,000 and is also focused on one side of the Earth. Happens to be the opposite side of the Earth where the excursion is now happening. But my point being is that there was no catastrophic physical geologic phenomenon during this time. There were no oceans washing over the planet. There was no crustal slip. There's no evidence for it. But what there is evidence for is mass extinction. And a paper that came out in May of 2019 blew the lid on that science. The Role of Geomagnetic Field Intensity in Late Quaternary Evolution of Humans and Large Mammals. And it had been long speculated that biological evolution was influenced by ultraviolet radiation, UVR, reaching the Earth's surface, despite imprecise knowledge of the timing of both UVR flux and evolutionary events. Now, the past strength of Earth's dipole field provides a, pox, a proxy for this UVR flux, because of its role in maintaining the stratospheric ozone. In times of very low field intensity, huge amounts of space radiation rain down, including UVA, B, and C. And we're looking at some of those magnetic excursions. The deepest 
in a very long time was 41,000 years ago during the Le Champ excursion. But there have been multiple excursions over the last 300,000 years. And so I'm just going to move that down here so we can see 300,000 years to present. We've had the Portuguese orphan excursion, a very long excursion that lasted tens of thousands of years. The Pringle Falls was a very rapid one and a mass extinction. The Pringle Falls B, Iceland Basin, the Blake, the Blake B and A, the Le Champ, the Mono Lake, and then the infamous Younger Dryas event. Now, there were some catastrophic occurrences that happened at this event, but that was because it's the 100,000-year event, which is the end of the Ice Age and the beginning of the interstadial. And that is not going to happen for about another 88,000 years. So nothing to worry about there. But what we do have to worry about during these excursions is mass extinction and speciation. And here we can see the drop-down from 50,000 years ago at the peak dipole and then two dips down to the lowest field intensity in a very long time on Earth, millions of years. And in fact, almost a polar reversal, but we haven't had a polar reversal for over 700,000 years. The Matayamas Brunus Matayama reversal was the last polarity reversal on Earth. It's approaching a million years now. And there's no evidence that that's happening. What is happening is a magnetic excursion that happens all the time, as we can see here. Now, the events aren't neatly packaged into 12,000-year cycles the way some people purport on their fraudulent channel. And, but they do happen often and frequent. There seems to be like a six to 10,000 year uh, pattern here and large events here at 41,000, 34,000, and 12,000 have no pattern whatsoever. And even if we go back deeper, there's no pattern whatsoever. If these are the geomagnetic excursions exclusive, they can last anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40,000 years. There is no regular periodicity, regardless of any, what anyone's chart says. Now, what does happen is massive amounts of cosmic radiation come in. And here you can see the dung fungi influx rate in Australia. Cosmic rays equal cloud nucleation, excessive rains and flooding. So we would expect to have increased fungi during these periods. And we, and we exactly see that in the graph. During the minimum... Dipole moment here, maximum dung fungi, dung fungi to be exact. But what's more interesting, at these major flexures, we have species that come and go. That here is a species that began during this di. All of these species come into effect during the dipole flux down, and they live through all the magnetic excursion. And then, as the field recovers, they all go extinct. Neanderthals went extinct during the first drop down, and Cro Magnon made it through. So maybe Cro Magnon was able, and based on a podcast we did last night and some genetic studies, it seems like Cro Magnon and Neanderthal were interbreeding, but Cro Magnon was the only species able to have fertile and viable offspring. The offspring from Neanderthals might have been infertile so something is going on during these high cosmic ray flux where evolution occurs and extinction occurs all at the same time and the one thing that we know that can cause the human genome to mutate is cosmic rays that's it other than CRISPR so cosmic rays can and do mutate genes and we have increased cosmic rays during these Drop downs, these low dipole moments, these magnetic excursions. And here, the LeChamp excursion, the largest one, we have very clear evidence that it causes speciation and extinction all at the same time. And not just in hominids. If you look up here at the Homo sapiens, that all branch off in huge amounts of groups right after the LeChamp. 
There's other excursions here where we can see other extinction events and other changes in the phylogenetic nodes of hominids. So what we can glean from this data is these magnetic excursions, they do everything on Earth. They, they change the planet as we know it. Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould posited this term back in the early 90s. And they called it punctuated equilibria, where things come and go rapidly at these flexure points, but they really didn't have a mechanism. But now we know it's magnetic excursions. And they happen frequently. Every six thousand years or more with a periodicity of tens of thousands at the maximum. Just as this graph reveals in the paper that we're going to provide you below the role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and mammals. All the links will be below for you to get up to speed on what was going on in past geomagnetic excursions because we're living one now, whether you believe it or not. And in a decade or a few decades, we are going to see those changes in weather. We are going to see that aurora move towards the equator. And we are going to see the end of the empire and much more. And I hope you're prepared and not scared for what's coming. It's a cumulative effect. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes years and years and years and years. And so we'll be alive witnessing it as it occurs. It's not like a flash happens and the pole flips and the oceans wash over. That's all nonsense. There is no geologic evidence for that ever occurring. There are no geologic catastrophic ocean wash washovers anywhere that we, can, that we have data from as a stratigrapher. I put all of my scientific endeavor on the line by stating that. But I've been all over the U.S. and there have been thousands of geologists before me and we don't find any evidence that this occurred. So stop worrying about that nonsense narrative. It's a fairy tale. Period. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. There's lots of good information on what geomagnetic excursions are that they are extinction events as well as speciation events, that they don't occur overnight. They take decades and decades to occur. The Lachamp took almost 2,000 years for it to fully transit. And at that time, dozens, if not hundreds of species came and went because of the cosmic ray flux. Dung fungi increased because of the increased cosmic rays and record rain and flooding. Become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom. Me, me.